Hello there, HQTs. Fridays are the best in the summertime, aren't they? Who got a half day today for summer Fridays? I did, it just happens to be the other half of the day. Now, I'm on the night shift, obviously. If you need to keep cool, you'd be glad to hear it's National Ice Cream Sandwich Day. These special days get very specific, don't they? Anyone know if they make green tea ice cream sandwiches? Or do they have a special day for that? If so, please send one my way. That would be chill. It's getting a little hot in here. Let me get out of this. Here we go. Way better. Welcome, everyone. I'm Sharon Carpenter, your ice cool quiz queen of the mean. And this is HQ Trivia, where you use those brains to make it rain. Now, forget my ice cream sandwich. Drake has released an entire care package for his fans. It's a cool compilation album. Only Drizzy can drop a bunch of old songs and still have us acting like they're brand spanking new. Yeah, I've got to that one. Now, this is season four. Here's how it's going down tonight. I'm going to ask you a series of questions. You have 10 seconds to tap that answer. If you get it right, you move on. If you make it to question 11 and get that correct, you'll have the chance to win a cash prize or keep playing towards the jackpot. As always, we'll have other prizes coming at you along the way. More winning and more Wonga, people. That's what it's about. Now, tonight, we are giving away a care package of epic proportion, 235 thousand dollars and you may want to toss some of that my way if you win because sharing is caring just trying to help you guys out all right now we've got some super cool games coming up over the next week you all know i can be a bit of a diva but these divine women have me be all the well can you Hit those high notes, we'll find out on Sunday, the easy or the hard way. Monday, it's time to face reality, finally. I'm talking reality TV trivia. Whether you prefer to keep up with the Kardashians, The Bachelor, American Idol, The Voice, The Housewives, whatever, this one is for you. It's gonna be quite the reality check. Monday at 9 p.m., be there. And then, next Thursday, live from New York, it's SNL. Trivia. I can see Russia from my house. Party on, Wayne. Party on, girl. Who could that be, boys and girls? Sean Connery, just pick a category. Not so fast, Trevor. El Nino is Spanish for the Nino. Hilarious. Yeah, it's the best of Saturday Night Live all happening on Thursday. So much cool stuff going on. I can hardly contain myself. Now, what level are you guys on right now? Let me know in the chat, because you want to level up as high as you possibly can this season. And don't worry, we've got you covered. You can buy point multipliers. If you see it on your screen right now, in front of you, the more points you earn, the higher your level. The higher your level, the better chance you have of winning cash and hitting that incredibly big jackpot. Now, remember the movie? I know what you did last summer, you remember that. I even loved the book. Well, breaking news is gonna be made into a TV show. So cool, right? So here's my question to you. What other horror movie should be remade for TV? All right, your options are Child's Play, Get Out, or The Conjuring. Can we have all three, please? These are all good ones. But I know my favorite, let's see if it's your favorite. My favorite, Get Out, that's what I, what I want to say. Oh, okay, it was very close, about a third, a third, a third, but most of you want The Conjuring as a TV series. Very cool, that would be awesome. Okay, here is another one for you guys. Who's your favorite horror movie villain? Is it The Babadook, Jigsaw, or The Nun? Favorite horror movie villain? These are all iconic ones. All pretty scary, aren't they? You wouldn't want to come face to face with any of these guys. Jigsaw, you're loving Jigsaw, that weird clown with the like spirally cheekbone things. And slay the warm up. Can you do the same on the real game? We're about to find out. Okay, players, it's time to either get slayed or... 
One. A recently released movie is titled Once Upon a Time in what? Hollywood, some basement, the HQ lobby. These are all pretty cool titles. I'd like to see all of these. A lot goes down in the HQ lobby, wouldn't you like to know? But you'll have to wait for the release to find out what. In the meantime, hottie alert is Hollywood. Of course, you stars knew that 199,000 if you did. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood is a Tarantino movie, of course, starring my celeb crushes and everyone else's, Brad Pitt and Leo DiCaprio, definitely Oscar worthy. I don't even have to see it to know that. Gonna see it soon though. Remember, don't run into a savage without an extra life. You can use up to three of them in a game. Buy one right now. If you see it on your screen, you can also buy extra lives throughout the game by tapping on the heart below. Okay, you just can't use them on prize questions or after Q12. You know the rules already, don't you? Ready for Q2. On which continent did the Aztec civilization arise? North America, Europe, Asia. I'm asking you about the Aztecs. If you tapped on Europe, you should have paid way more attention in that boring history classes. North America, did you land on the right piece of land? 177,000 of you did. The Aztecs were a Mesoamerican empire that ran chunks of what's now Mexico. And of course, Mexico is in North America. Yeah. Good stuff. Key three. Which animal's meat would be called venison today? Pig, sheep, deer. Not just today, but yesterday as well. And even tomorrow. The only way you'd get venison from a pig is himself sold you a deer. Oh dear, if you didn't tap deer, because that is the answer. We were looking for 191,000 of you with the delicious answer. Venison originally meant the meat of any game animal, but now it's specific to deer, antelope, or even reindeer. Watch out now, Rudolph. Be careful out there. You four. A popular meme thought to show Zach Galifianakis was recently revealed to be who? Dustin Hoffman, Robert Redford, Paul Newman. I had to practice that name a lot. I could have sworn that was a member of the Bee Gees though. Don't forget to remember, it's Robert Redford. Questioning your whole life now, right? 117,000 of you read that well. You may have thought Galifianakis was having a particularly handsome day in that meme, but nope, it was Robert Redford on a particularly bad day. Q5, coming at you right now. What kind of external phone call did Steve Jobs make to publicly demonstrate the iPhone for the first time? Prank call, FaceTime, teleconference. Jobs always did it big. I feel naked without my iPhone now, but back then I was all about the Blackberry. He used a prank call. You aren't playing around, are you? 82,000 of you. That was a brutal question. The iPhone is like having the whole world in your pocket, really, isn't it? Here's how he introduced it to the world. Good morning, Starbucks phone. How can I help you? Yes, I'd like to order 4,000 lattes to go, please. No, just kidding. Wrong number. Thank you. Bye-bye. You know you could totally afford those lattes, though. All 4,000 of them. Six, Q6, which state's postal abbreviation is also a nickname of one of America's most populated cities, Louisiana, Pennsylvania, Oregon. Hopefully you'll be in a great state after this. Just throw together some jazz crawfish and beignets and you have the tasty gumbo known as Louisiana. That is the answer we were looking for. 141,000 of you knew that. The postal abbreviation for Louisiana is L-A, and so is the nickname for Los Angeles, right? Wonder how many times New Orleans mail ends up in Hollywood and vice versa. Probably a lot. Q7. Which of these KISS members frequently wore red lipstick as part of his stage look? Ace Fraley, Gene Simmons, Peter Chris. Oh, where it starts part of my stage look too. With that hair and makeup, I couldn't tell any of them apart. Puckering up with a red pout is Peter Chris. You're crossing over to the next round on this savage question. A lot of you aren't, 110,000 of you done. 
unless you've got an extra life, of course. 52,000 of you got that correct, correct. Kisses to you. Now, you can't call yourself Kiss without some luscious lips. Yes, Paul Stanley rocked the red lippy too, but we're talking about drummer slash catman, Peter Chris, legends, Q8. Of all of Canada's provinces and territories, which is smallest by land area? Prince Edward Island, New Brunswick, Nova Scotia. They say size doesn't matter. They lied. If you tapped on New Brunswick, this is new news to you. It's Prince Edward Island. You're swimming across to it, 99,000 of you are. Prince Edward Island may be the smallest of the three, but it's got some big reasons to visit. Red sand beaches and a ton of tasty seafood, lobster and all that good stuff. Yummy. Q9. The player depicted in the NBA's logo played for which team? Philadelphia 76ers, Los Angeles Lakers, Boston Celtics. Yes, the logo was a real person. Now, I'm more of a Brooklyn Nets girl, especially now. KD and Kyrie, yeah. Now, this player was balling for the Lakers. Nothing but net for 96,000 of you. You knew that. The NBA won't actually admit that it's Jerry West on the logo. They won't deny it either, but we recognize that stance anywhere. Not really. Could really be any basketball player, couldn't it? Q. 10. This test is used to demonstrate what neurological effect. The Franson effect, Stroop effect, McGurk effect. I need you in full effect. Did you try that little test right there as we were showing it? Calling out the color of a word sounds simple, but it gets a little tricky when the word says a different color, right? Stroop effect is what we call it. You are trooping forwards, 97,000 of you. The discovery was first published in English by psychologist John Ridley Stroop, or as we like to call him at HQ, Stroop Doggy Dog. And guess what? We've got our first prize question coming your way. Money is coming at you. Remember, if you get this next question correct, you'll have a decision to make. Either take what's in the pot or try to win the lot. $235,000 is on the line tonight. Good luck. Q11. If you're facing north in the capital rotunda, which way is the Senate? Straight ahead, turn right, turn left. Have you been to the capital rotunda before? Which way do you want to go? If you're tapped on turn right, you couldn't be more wrong. Straight ahead, that's where we want to go. You're moving straight ahead. 20,000, another savage. Double the savage tonight so far. 80,000 gone. 20,000 left in the game. The building belongs to US citizens, so you can just march right in. Unless it's after hours, then you may get arrested. But on your way to jail, you'll pass the Senate. Just right ahead. And we have cash. Right ahead, right now, what do we have? 10 cents to 20,318 players. The next prize is four questions away. 10 cents to 20,000 of you. Do you want to take that cash and duck out or are you going to stick with me? 5,113 players. Choose to take 10 cents. Early winners tonight, 15,000 of you. You're coming with me to Q12, but don't forget, it's your last chance to use your extra lives. They won't work after Q12. Here goes with that question. Kennedy Space Center traditionally celebrates successful launches with a meal that does not include what? Chicken, beans, cornbread. Make a meal out of this one. From Texas to Florida, they like to celebrate Southern style at NASA minus the chicken, where's the chicken? What happened to the chicken? Who found the chicken? 8,000 of you found that chicken. Now, keeping with tradition since the first shuttle launch, the celebration meal of choice at Cape Canaveral is beans, cornbread, and, oh, that's it. Beans and cornbread. Okay, I mean, it's quite appetizing, I guess. Q13, which lottery game offers the worst odds of winning the top prize? Mega Millions, Powerball, Lucky for Life. None of them offer good odds, do they? We'll dream of hitting at least one of these jackpots, but you'd be more likely to be struck by lightning on a date with Beyonce than to win the Mega Millions. 
We have a mega jackpot, and you're heading towards it. 5,850 of you. Lucky for Life offers plausible odds at 30 million to one. As for mega millions, one in 300 mil is more like it. Not very likely at all. Q14. In the tongue twister, Betty Butter thinks the original butter will do what to her batter? Make it bitter, make it better, make it blander. Oh, Miss Butter, what are you talking about? If you ever made it better, you just made it a whole lot worse for yourself. And that probably made you bitter. Make it bitter is what we were looking for. 2,450 of you. You know that one, don't you? Betty Butter bought some butter, but she said the butter's bitter. If I put it in my batter, it will make my batter bitter. I'm good, right? Great assessment, though, Betty. Assess this. Your next prize question is Q15. It's a money question. According to its designer, this dress was made to look like what? Christmas tree, Disney princess, layer cake. You wouldn't catch me done in that thing. What is it supposed to look like? I'm still wondering. The fact that we have to ask is not a good sign for the designer. It was supposed to look like a Christmas tree. Christmas has come early for 772 of you. Brutal. Luna Lovegood wasn't afraid to make a fashion statement, honey. And the costume designer for Harry Potter outdid themselves here. And since you outdid yourselves as well, time to reap the reward. We are offering $3.90 to 771 players. Three questions until the next prize, $3.90 on this Friday night. Sounds about right. 539 players choose to take that cash. Early winners in the game, 230 of you trekking on with me tonight. Let's do it. Q16. This album cover is based on another one from which artist? Little Richard, The Beatles, Elvis Presley. All legends in the game. Now, if you went for Little Richard, good golly, Miss Molly, love me tender, please, because it's Elvis Presley. You are shaking, you are gyrating onwards, 219 of you. This 1979 Clash album cover for London Calling is based on this cover of Elvis Presley's 1959 debut. And when I say based on, I mean it's a complete rip-off, really, isn't it? Pretty cool stuff, you music lovers, you knew that. Q17. Which of these actors has not voiced a cartoon bunny? Jordan Peele, Anna Faris, Kevin Hart. That's the end thing apparently, voicing a cartoon bunny. You know you have made it when you voiced a cartoon bunny. Sorry, Anna Faris, you still have far to go. Anna is the answer 85 of you leaping onwards anna has played a rabbit before in a movie though but it was a house bunny and it was not animated just not good enough anna we're bounding on to our next prize question more money less problems is q18 which of these major league baseball mascots was retired in the 1970s mr met fred bird yuppie early retirement methinks MLB, some of you have a big head, but this guy's got a massive baseball sitting on his shoulders. Mr. Met, you met your match, or did you 31 if you did? Yes, Mr. Met is still around today, but he was phased out in the 70s, only to make a major comeback to Major League Baseball 20 years later. And we've got some cash on hand right now. We are offering $66.67 ,66 to 30 players. All right, and with $67 right there, what you gonna do? What's it gonna be? 58 players. Okay, 58 players choose to take $66.67. Three questions until the next prize, and nobody is left playing. You all took the cash. Well done. A 
another impressive game HQCs. We had a bunch of winners at different levels. Congrats to all of you. A whole bunch of cash was snagged as well. You came, you played, you totally slayed. I'm Sharon Carpenter. You can hit me on the socials. Here's where to find me. Stop by, say hi, don't be shy. We're back tomorrow, everyone. Of course, same time, same place, with more cash and more fun. I'm off to Barbados now. It's a hard life. I will see you next week though, can't wait. Bye my lovelies.